Hey guys, how's it going? PG Design here once again. Today we're going to be looking at a few easy ways to speed up your drafting in AutoCAD 2013. So, center button on the mouse allows you to pan. If you click that wheel button, it allows you to pan. Scrolling out, zooms out, scrolling in, zooms in. Right click gives you your options, and your left click is select. If you start a line, go up here, line, good. So say you have a couple of lines here, you have a circle. Okay, so use your select and you drag to the right, or to the left, sorry. You're going to have your inclusive select. So everything it touches, it will select and highlight. So if I want to move those over, I can because my inclusive select. Say I just want to select this one. Even though I'm touching the circle, it's not going to select it because I'm going to the left and it's an exclusive select. So there, we can just move that one. Perfect. Okay, good. That covers the mouse, basically. So delete those and just draw a few simple things so like a line and a circle and we can demonstrate some of these snap tools that can help speed up your drafting as well so down here we have a few different options we have infer constraints I'm not sure too much what that is snap mode this is a really annoying tool that AutoCAD put in here I'm not sure exactly what the application is but the way to turn it off is you press F9 or you click on this right here so what it does it only allows you to snap to these parts of the graph or your background grid. So if you have the grid turned off, you won't even be able to see what it's snapping to, so make sure you have that turned on. So that's a really annoying tool that I've turned on in the past and I've had no idea how to turn it off. So that's how you turn that off. So right here you have your orthographic snaps, so L, that'll create a line, and this allows you to draw on one of the axes, one of your planar axes. Okay, good. Then you have other orthographic uh, This allows you to draw on the axes, it snaps to them, but you can draw on any angle as well. I like to keep this one on and this grid display as well. Then you have your snaps. So this is very important because if you try and draw a line to the bottom, at the bottom of this corner, it's going to be really tough to get right on. Oh, you missed. You missed. Okay, if you turn your snaps on and you have the right snaps on, you're, it's going to snap right to your endpoints. So if you go ahead and right click on this, or another way to access that, you just type in O snap, and it's going to bring up this box and all these different options in here. So I like to keep endpoint, midpoint, center turned on, as well as intersection, extension, perpendicular, and tangent isn't that important. Neither is uh, nearest and nor is parallel. Not that, not that helpful. So we're just going to go over what a few of these do. So endpoint. So endpoint is when it snaps to the endpoint of a line. Center is when it snaps to the center of a line. These are all useful when you're drafting because it doesn't. Have allows you not to have to measure every single thing you do center of a circle so you have to go to the outside of the circle and it will allow you to select the center and you can draw from that point outward so you can type in O snap again or just some other options here intersection okay if you type intersection it's going to allow you to intersect at the point where you start this line and where it intersects this line then you've got a few other ones node Nah, not quite as useful. Don't use that too much. Quadrant. I suppose that's the center of a of a polygon. If you draw a polygon, you've got extension. This will snap your line to an extended region. Insertion. I'm not too sure what that is. I haven't used in the past. Perpendicular. So say you have a line on an angle, and you want this to go perpendicular. You want another line to connect to it perpendicular. That's what perpendicular does. It'll allow you to draw a line that's exactly perpendicular to another line or to a circle. It works also with a circle. There, that line's going to be perpendicular to that point on the circle exactly. So a few other options in here. We've got tangent. That's useful if you really need to connect to the tangent of the circle. You just start a line anywhere, and you can connect that tangent. Okay. So I don't usually keep that on because it creates a lot of snapping points. Then you've got nearest. This will snap to the nearest point on your line. So just like this, you go near this line, nearest there. Snaps right to that point where my mouse was nearest to. Good. Then you've got parallel. Makes lines parallel to other lines. Pretty straightforward. Apparent intersection. This is okay. So there, apparently, that's where it would intersect if that line continued. So that's what apparent intersection does. Okay, good. Then you got your 3D snap. Uh, this is if you're drawing in 3D. I've done it before. It's not too good in AutoCAD app for Inventor. It's really helpful if you're in 3D AutoCAD that works. Okay, this next tab right here, dynamic input. So if that's turned off, you're not going to be able to specify the length of this unless you have you use your special commands like 
if you type in 22 right now, it'll become 22 in length, so that's 22 in length. Delete that, so then you want to start another line. Okay, so if you really don't want to have this, this command on right here, this dynamic input on, that's fine. You're going to have to type in your angles if you want to specify an angle like this. So say like 45 degrees, you're going to have to do angle 45 degrees, and it's only going to allow you to draw on a 45 degree angle. But then you have to understand 360 degree coordinates, so 270 would be right here, 360 would be up here, or zero, whatever. That's what this one does, allows you to input your things visually. So say 50, tab, 30 degrees. Okay, so that's what that does. We don't need that line anymore, so I like to keep that on if I want to input some stuff, show show line weight, whatever. Uh, whatever you're doing, depends what you're doing. If you want to show it, show it. If you don't want to, don't show it. Show high transparency, also depends on your layers and stuff. Okay, quick properties, okay, you can, you can click on that, quick properties, whatever. Then right here, you have your selection cycling. So I'm going to give you a little example of what this does. Not like that, that won't help. No, neither will that, there. Circle, okay. So if you have select cycling on, it's going to give that little blue icon above. You click on that, it's going to give you the option whether you want to select the circle or the line because they're pretty close together right there. So this works if you have a lot of uh, a lot of lines. So yeah, that's what this properties thing does. If you select something, it'll bring up your quick properties automatically. So that can be that can be helpful, I guess, depends on what you're doing, or it can get really annoying. So that's just basically how snapping works in AutoCAD. Oh yeah, another thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video with the mouse. If you double click the center button, it's going to zoom to your extents. So I find this really useful because if you're working over here and you accidentally pan over and it's a bit out of the way or you want to save to the extents, just double click and it's going to go right to your extents you're drawing. So that's good. So now for a few quick keys I don't want to tell you before I end this video. So L is line. L enter. Make a line. C enter. Will be circle. And then you've got, uh, if you type in a rectangle, that's quick for rectangle. You can specify your lengths in any direction. And then up here you have your, this is also pretty helpful, if you go to polygon, you can choose the amount of sides you want. So say you want like 18 sides, you can have an 18 side polygon. Oof, that's pretty cool. So then all, all your functions have, have a quick key. So off, you can type in all your commands. So if you want offset, I didn't select this, but okay. Select that, type in offset, and... It'll offset it by the distance, so you move your mouse. But you have to hit enter. I didn't hit enter. You also have a ray, so this is good if you have a rectangle or a circle or something, and you want to make a rectangular array, path array. That's actually pretty cool. You can make a path and make stuff appear along that path. So I select this, enter, center point there. It'll rotate them. You can select whether or not you want the objects to rotate themselves. So just go through this list down here. You have base point items, angle between. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. Okay. If you want to add color to something, so if I draw a rectangle or a polygon or whatever, so this is going to have 18 sides. Enter. Okay. Double click that middle button. It's going to go to the extents. And if I want to color that in, type in hatch. And it's going to bring up my color options. So solid. Okay, you can choose your color and everything if you red, yellow, yeah. Enter. There we go. I don't know why it didn't work the last time, so. Hatch, enter. And then select the internal point of your shape. Works for almost all shapes, unless you have some complicated splines and stuff. Sometimes it doesn't like to hatch those too nicely, but uh, most of the time it works. Text. So this specifies the height of your text right here, and then what direction you want it to go in, your angle, and then you have to type it in. I just messed that up pretty bad, so let's try that again. Height, and then distance. Then you can type it in like my name. There, good. And you can move that around and stuff. Oh yeah, okay, another quickie, M for move. So say you have a triangle, another good quickie that you should learn. So say so you make a polygon, you want three sides, good. Inscribed in circle, okay. So say so you just want this line, you want to move it out, but you don't want to be connected to that. Select that and type in explode. There, now you're going to be able to move these one by one. Because you exploded it. So that's another useful quick key. As you know, mirror, just type in MI, it's going to give you your mirror option. There we go. It's then you have your stretch copy. Copy CO. 
It's really useful. Copy app. Anyway, so those are just a few tips and tricks for AutoCAD. Thanks for watching.